right, so number five is refusing to play them down when it might pump them up. So here's, here's a, an interesting blunder, really. The blunder a lot of parents make in the U.S. is they only want to play their child up, a higher level. Every practice session has to be an up session. In every tournament, they want to play them up. And it's a big critical mistake in my book. Um, I had a, a parent last week say, if you make my daughter play with little Martha, we're taking her somewhere else. Martha is eight points below her on the national level. We only want our daughter playing up. And all we could say was, okay, good luck, bye. Because it's really meaningful that they learn how to, how to play down. So we're going to kind of go into it a little bit deeper later on. But um, this photo is, is my daughter Sarah and her doubles partner growing up, Vanya King. And as you know, Vanya won Wimbledon in, in US Open this year. But Vanya did something very, very interesting when they were 17. Vanya didn't find great success winning national titles in the US. So she wasn't getting any love from the USTA wildcard department. So instead of playing the junior national circuit in the summer, she went to Asia and played uh, Indonesia. She played some real far off exotic ITF smaller junior tournaments. And out of the four tournaments, she won two. Now along that road, the meaningful thing was she learned how to compete and stay composed for five matches a tournament, and which is a skill. Can you play well for you know, 12 sets in a row, not just 30 minutes in a row, right? So anyway, she came back. The USGA gave her wild cards into a, a couple of major events, including the US Open. She, uh, I think she got a, a terrific draw, and she played incredible. She at least made it to the third or fourth round, and by the end of the year, she was top 50 on the WTA tour, and she never even looked back at junior tennis. And so the key for her was she played down to learn how to win. So that might be meaningful, playing down occasionally. So far, so good out there? Is this stuff uh, meaningful? Yeah? OK, awesome. This, we'll keep going. Uh, parental blunder. Because I could go to the bar. I mean, I saw a, a cool bar down there. Sorry, Travis. He's shaking his head. Why did I invite this guy? Man. Um, as parents get, find success and the juniors find success, sometimes parents have a little bit of an ego and they're not very flexible. So we want to make sure we gently encourage, encourage that. Um, for us, if we have parents that really demand, they, they want their kids into the highest level junior clinic, we ask them just to call every week, call back every week, and you'll get in. Um, stay flexible. Maybe there's not room this week for your little phenom, but there'll be room next week. Um, in the US, it's, it's, it's known if a, if a first round match starts at 10 AM, they usually go on at, at 11 or 11.30. And so you got to be flexible a little bit with that stuff. Um, at first, they may not even get into a, a national tournament. They may be on the alternate list, um, even 12 out of the tournament. And then a day before the tournament may check, the, the, the parent might check, check the tournament on the uh, internet. Um, and the parent finds that their player is in. And now they have to quickly get on a flight or, or drive five hours now to get to the tournament. So you got to be OK with being flexible. And we have to really educate parents. So you got to be OK with being flexible. And the next level up, let's say the junior player does win a national title. Now they get calls from the higher ups at the USTA. And they call, they go, would you like a wild card into this $50,000 event? And the parent goes, this is incredible. This is great. When? And they go, tomorrow. And you go, where? And they go, Florida. And you go, well, you know you're calling California, don't you? And they go, yeah, your child goes on at 10. Do you want it or not? And flexible, then you got to be flexible if you're going to get ahead in this game. Um, you fly to Florida for a $25,000 pro tournament. Then you get a call the day before the match that now there's a, an opening in a $100,000 tournament in Pittsburgh tomorrow at 10. And so you got to be flexible. So we want to make sure that we're 
kind of educating the parent that this is going to be a it's going to be a bumpy ride, man. If they're going to work on developing top level players. Okay, undervaluing the importance of life skills. Life skills are it's, it's huge. We don't even know how important it is. All this networking and and it's just, remember I mentioned a little bit that I. I taught side by side with Craig Tarley. This is in the 1980s. And now, from being friends for that long, I'm here with you. <laughs> Life skills. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure he didn't call me to come because of my topspin backhand. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Has anybody heard of this gentleman, Chris Langan? Probably not here in Australia, but. He's known <clears throat> as the smartest man in the U.S. His IQ is off the charts, and chances are nobody will ever, ever, ever hear of him uh, because he's underdeveloped. He doesn't really have life skills. He doesn't understand how to handle people and deal with people. All right, so the, the smartest guy ever recorded in the U.S., and his jobs have been a uh, bouncer at a nightclub, and now he's actually feeding horses in, in Minnesota. Smartest guy in the country. Life skills. So it's really important as we kind of educate tennis parents, ask them to build relationships with different players, take phone numbers, get practice partners, with different families, with the linesmen, with the federation representatives, with all the different coaches. Um, the other coaches and the other families are not your enemies. They're the ones that are going to tell you about a new tournament in a different city. And they're going to tell the kids about different programs that might be meaningful, so, but including yours. If you have a big program and you're teaching everybody life skills, uh, like Michael said, they're, they're your biggest sales force. They're going to recruit players to you, unless they're their, uh, their rival and they won't tell anybody about you. OK, so. The next blunder with tennis parents, hanging out and watching the match versus charting or videotaping the match. You remember the old idea that um, there's different types of learners, you know, visual learning, kinesthetic learning. Well, so we're finding, of course, visual learners are, are pretty darn popular out there. So it might be meaningful to ask the parents to videotape real tournament play. There's a whole world full of information junior players can see if, if they can watch themselves on video perform in a real match. Um, as far as the charting goes, the parents can do basic unforced errors to winner charts, which I'm sure you, we all do as coaches. Court positioning charts, ball placement charts. My favorite is cause of error charts. So in the US with a top level player, um, we're finding more and more that the cause of errors, it's shot selection. Um, second is movement and spacing. And stroke production is last. But what do most coaches teach day in, day out? Stroke production. So you never see a kid walk off the court and go, I would have won if my backhand follow through was two inches higher. They don't. They come off the court and they go, man, I can't beat a pusher. Or, I fell apart when this person cheats. Or I go up 5-2, man, and I can't close out a set. So those are more mental or emotional type of, uh, type of issues that, that you might pick up if you videotape a little bit. Any other questions or, or comments? Or so far, so good? All right. We ask all of our, of our players to. Um, abide by the school methodology of training. And so all we mean by this is we sit down with the parents once a week. And you know when the, the children are going through school, they might be going through an hour of math, science, and history, and, and in the US, social studies. Well, in tennis training, we want the players to go through stroke production, uh, and then mental skills, the X's and O's of beating different styles of opponents. Uh, the emotional stability of maybe between point rituals and change of our rituals, but then also the movement, spacing, stamina, fitness. So we want to make sure that our players are, are becoming evenly developed. And, and again, the parents need help a little bit. Uh, weekly planners, match logs that the players fill out after each match are proving pretty important. 
And some players that are very, if you remember brain typing, very detail oriented, they're, uh, they do daily focus journals. They list two or three things that they're doing each day to, to help them become higher ranked.